All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Dell Inspiron 13 5379 2-in-1. We're going to be using a JAS-1 screwdriver, and we're going to undo all the screws from the bottom. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern, and I remove them. So we got two back near the hinges, and we got three here, and then four more down here. All right, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then comment on them because that's what the algorithm likes to see. And yeah, other than that, uh, let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws and get the bottom cover off. So the customer said their hard drive is dead. They brought an SSD, um, though the SSD does have like some screws they put in there. So I'm going to remove these. Okay. All right. All right. And we're just going to quickly go over the components inside because the customer kind of wanted to have it done quick. Right, so let's get all these screws out. All right, and then let's go ahead and pop this off. So actually, it looks like this bottom cover comes off super easy. I just pulled up from there, and you can see it popped out. I don't know if the customer broke something or what, but that came out super easy. Okay, anyways, we're going to get the hard drive screws, or at least the remaining ones. So there's one here and one here. Oops, I probably should do a thumbnail real quick. So let me line this up and then get a thumbnail inside all right so anyways you got all these components in here you got the battery i'm not going to be removing it but i'll show you battery model number it is wd uh, x0r this is a very common dell laptop battery okay you got two slots for ram it looks like only one is being used in this case let's zoom in and show you we can pull these two tabs away from the stick of ram it pops up and you can pull that out the RAM is PC4 2400T, so if you need RAM, you can upgrade to any PC4 2400T. It's an 8-gig stick. If you want, you can add another 8-gig stick, or you can get two 16-gig sticks and upgrade that way. All right, let's go over the connections here. You have the speaker connector here. This kind of connector, I kind of just wiggle with my fingernails, like pulling, and eventually it will pop out. And you got the cable from that speaker going to the other speaker here. All right, you got this little cable um, board here for the volume and the power buttons. And that goes up and where does it connect? It connects to the motherboard, or not the motherboard here, but it connects to the separate board here. You got the CMOS, BIOS, RTC, real-time clock, battery button here, button cell battery here. All right, these all have those connectors where you kind of wiggle and pull it out. There's this metal latch that you got to flip up if you want to disconnect this cable, then you can pull that out. And that connects the this board to the motherboard, which has the USB port, the SD card slot, as well as the wireless card, and then obviously the buttons there. Okay, you got the uh, hard drive or two and a half inch hard drive or SATA connector here. This you just grab and you can pull straight up. A lot of times I end up like pulling on the side here to help pop it out. Uh, we might actually have to pop that out to replace the SSD, but we'll see. All right, you got the fan here. It looks like there's two screws, connectors there. You grab and wiggle. Uh, CPU is here, soldered to the motherboard. If you remove the heat sink here, you do need to redo the thermal paste. All right, the screen has two connections. Most likely, this is the LCD LVDS connector, and then this is probably for like the camera and microphones and stuff like that. All right, this one has the flip latch. This one has a plastic latch that flips this way. This one has that metal bar. There's the DC jack charge port connector here. There's one screw there if you want to remove it, but the issue is they tuck the, um, I'm pretty sure they hide the um, hinge underneath here. So if you're going to remove this, you need to take the whole motherboard out. If you're lucky, you can just undo a bunch of the motherboard screws so it lifts slightly enough that you can lift this slightly enough to get this out. Um, anyways, uh, there's a few more connectors in here. I'm not going to take the thing out to see what exactly, so I'm not too sure which two these are, but there's the keyboard one, keyboard backlight, um, most likely touchpad, and let me see here. Is there anything under there? Whoa. Forgot that SSD, or that hard drive. We undid those screws. But yeah, there's two screws, so... 
One is for the touchpad or trackpad, and the other one, I'm not 100% sure what it's for, but I'm not gonna take the battery out. Oh, it's probably for this light sensor here. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and remove the hard drive, okay? So this lifts up like that, and again, I'm not gonna take this connector out because it's not necessary. To get this out, I get my fingernail in this little gap here, and then I kind of like pry it. Um, and then same thing with this side, you can get in the gap here, okay? And then you kind of pry this, all right? Just like that, you can see it's moving, and there we go. And then you can also go pry from like this area where it's connected, all right? And this had an SSD, but this is like a cheapy one that's probably not good, all right? so. They said it was giving a hard drive or SSD error. Um, we're gonna remove these four screws, put the new SSD in, and then install Windows. For Dell to start the boot from the uh, USB to start the Windows install, you press F12 while it's starting up, and we'll boot from there. All right, so there's the SSD, the old broken one, and put the new one in there. Now let's get the four screws in. All right, pretty simple, straightforward. Right, not really anything tricky to this. All right, two more screws, and then we're gonna start the Windows install. There we go. All right, then we'll get this. You wanna pinch the two together. Okay, there we go. And then we'll get that lined back up, drop that back down. Good. And then we'll get these two screws back in. And then we'll get the bottom cover. And that's pretty much it. Very simple to upgrade. It looks like on some models, uh, there's like uh, where these pads are. Some models might use an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD there. Um, but yeah. Oh, and one other thing, the battery connector, I, obviously I didn't mention, but it's here, but you can grab this. A lot of times this is very difficult to remove, so I have to use like a tool to get in this where it's raised to push that back. And then you also have to remove this part of the connector to transfer it to the new one. All right, anyways, let's get this in. It helps to put the bottom cover in at an angle like this because the little clips the legs. So we're gonna get that in, and then we're gonna clip all of this up here. All right, and there we go. And now we just gotta get all the screws and we'll start the Windows install. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or impair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, yeah, you don't really need to contribute that much, even if you can afford like a few cents, that would help a lot, um, because a lot of people are kind of afraid to send like a tiny amount because they feel like it's rude, but no, I prefer that over nothing. <laughs> yeah, but if you can't help out that way, um, it'd be very helpful. If you could watch a few of my other videos, it'll help you learn how to work on more things, and also it'll help YouTube know that people are interested in my content. All right, so that's pretty much it. Let's actually boot the USB now, and we should be good to go. We'll flip this thing over. Plug a USB that we have Windows 10 bootable on there. All right, let's go ahead and power it on, and we're gonna press F12. All right, just keep pressing F12, and you'll get the one-time boot menu. It just popped up. Here we go, and we're gonna boot from that, my USB. And then we just go through the normal install. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Let's drop this bike.